in this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to powers and roots. So to begin with here, let's take a look at powers. So powers are the number above the base. So for example here, let's say we've got 3 squared. We've got 3 squared. Well, in this case, my base would be the 3. My power would be the 2 here. So 3 squared, that's just the same as 3 times by 3 again. And 3 times 3, well, that would give us 9. Okay, so 3 squared is equal to 9. Now, we can also take the square of a negative number. So let's say we do minus 3 squared now. So minus 3 squared. Well, that's the same as minus 3 times minus 3. Or well, minus 3 times minus 3, that would give us positive 9. Okay, so that's positive 9. So what you can see there then, it doesn't matter whether the number that we square is positive or negative. But if you square a number, the result will always be positive. Okay. Now, we can also find the cube of a number. So we raise this power now to 3. If we increase this power by 1, so let's say we've got 3 cubed here. Well, this is the same as 3 times by 3 times by 3 again. Well, 3 times 3, that would be 9. Times that by 3, we're going to get 27 there. So 3 cubed is equal to 27. Now what happens when we cube a negative number? So again, using a similar example to what we did here, if we now do minus 3 cubed, what do we get here? Well, that would be minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. Well, minus 3 times minus 3, we already know that's positive 9. If we then times that by minus 3, I'm going to get minus 27 there. We get minus 27 there. So what we can see here when we cube a number, if we cube a positive number like we did here, the result will be positive. And if we cube a negative number just like we did here, then the result is a negative number. Okay, like we said, cube of a positive number is positive, cube of a negative number is negative. Okay, that's everything we need there for powers. So now let's take a look at roots. So the way we denote a root here is with this funny little symbol, like this. So this would be the square root of 16, okay? Now we don't write it, but with this square root here, there is actually a little 2, okay? Like we said, we just don't write it, it's just implied. Now this little 2, this tells us that we're taking the second root, or in other words, the square root of 16, okay? So for the square root of 16, all I'm thinking about here is what number do I times by itself again to get 16? Well, that must be 4 in this case. Because 4 times 4 is equal to 16 there. Okay. If we want another example here, let's say we're looking for the square root of 25. But what number do I times by itself again to get 25? Well, that number must be 5 there. Okay. Now, what we should state here is that every positive number has two square roots. We'll have one positive root or one positive solution and we'll have one negative root as well. Okay. So we can also take the cube root of a number and the way we denote the cube root here is pretty similar. Again we do this funny little symbol but this time now we need to put a number here and that number is a 3. And this tells whoever's reading this question, um, our answer, whatever we're doing, that we're taking the cube root of whatever that number is. So Let's say we're taking the cube root here of 8. What I'm looking at now is what number do I times by itself and itself again to get 8? And in that case, that must simply be 2. Okay. So another example here, let's say I'm looking for the cube root of, say, 64. Well, that will be 4 there. So if you do 4 times by 4, that would be 16. And then if you do 16 times 4, we get 64 there. Okay. And then finally, to finish with here, you need to be aware that you can't take the square root of a negative number. So for example, if I ask you what the square root of minus four is, then you wouldn't be able to answer that, okay? We can't do that um, because I can't find a number where if I times it by itself again, I get minus four, okay? And if you put that into your calculator, you should get some form of error. So it'll probably say mathematical error, um, 
and that just means that we can't get an answer for that question there. Okay, so you put that into your calculator, like I said, it'll return something similar to this. So it'll just say error, mathematical error, something along those lines. Okay, so that's everything we need there for our introduction to powers and roots. So what we're going to do now is take a look at some practice questions for powers and roots. So if we start off with question one here, we're asked to evaluate the square root of 16 plus 9. Now, for a question like this, this might look a little bit funny because we haven't quite covered an example like this. So let's run through it together. So for an example like this, what I need to do then is essentially just use bid mass. So anything that's underneath the square root here, we need to simplify that. So the square root of 16 plus 9, I'm going to write this as the square root of 16 plus 9 inside a bracket, like so. So now if I simplify this bracket here, just using bid mass, 16 plus 9 is 25, so this is the square root of 25 then. And the square root of 25, so what number do I times by itself again to get 25? Well, that number must be 5, okay? In that case, if we evaluate the square root of 16 plus 9, that's simply 5, okay? So you need to be very careful here. A very common mistake is to try and split this up. So what I often see is the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9. And this isn't the same, okay? The square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 9 is 3, and 4 plus 3 is equal to 7, okay? Like you can see, we get two totally different solutions there, but this here is not correct. So don't do this, do this instead. So like I said, anything that's underneath or inside the square root here, just use bid mass, put it inside the bracket, and just simplify, okay? So there we have it. So that's our solution to question 1. So to finish with here, we take a look at the very last question we're asked to evaluate the Q root of 18 plus 3 squared. So to evaluate this here, again, what I need to do is treat anything that's underneath or inside the square root as if it's inside a bracket. So what I've got here then is the Q root of 18 plus 3 squared. We put that inside a bracket like that, okay? What I need to do here now is just evaluate this bracket. What I've got then is the Q root. So 18 plus 3 squared. Or well, 3 squared would be 9. This is the bracket here. Or inside this bracket, I can write 18 plus 9. And then if we evaluate this bracket here again, this is the Q root of 18 plus 9, which is 27. Okay. Now obviously, you can miss this step out here. I am kind of showing every single step. Obviously, you could go straight from here here that would be fine as well so now all we need to do is evaluate the cube root of 27 so in other words what number where times by itself and itself again get 27 well that must simply be 3 there okay and there we have it so that's our solution so the cube root 27 is equal to 3 so in other words the cube root of 18 plus 3 squared is equal to 3 there okay that gives us the solution to question 2 and that brings us to the end of this video on an introduction to powers and roots. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for powers and roots.